Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Behind every successful political candidate is a campaign manager. In the case of President Joe Biden, that's also his sister and confidant, Valerie Biden Owens. From his 1972 grassroots Senate campaign to the 2020 win, Valerie Biden has been there for her big brother. The first woman to run a presidential campaign recently released her new memoir, Growing Up Biden. After decades of public service, why did you want to write a book now? Well, I'm a storyteller and I have written stories uh, about my family my entire life. Hmm. And I wrote the book because I think that there's magic in a family. And mm -hmm. even though my brother is the president, we grew up in a, in a middle-class American family, mid 20th century. But I think that there are so many families who will be hopefully listening this afternoon who grew up the same way. And no matter what's going on, the threads that build the weave the fabric of family together, of commitment or love and heartbreak and loss and sorrow, you know, they, they run through every family. And what I think would be the, for me as an author, which is pretty cool to say, uh, what I would be really happy with is if someone picks up the book and when she puts it down, she says, I'm in there. I love that all encompassing vibe because it is true when it when you find yourself in that same story. Uh, you have quite a story. You were one of the first female campaign managers in the 1970s. What was that like and what made you so successful? It all happened because my brother was a candidate and my brother was my best friend from the time. This is not an exaggeration, Amity, from the time that I remember being a little girl. He put his hand out and he said, come on, Val. He said, we've got places to go and things to do and people to see. And he took me with him. When his friends, I've said this before, but when his friends said, why did you bring a girl? His answer was, she's not a girl, she's my sister. So <laughs> I grew up as his sidekick and his best friend. So when he said, you know, he was running for the Senate, which was impossible. I mean, people dismissed us or... But, I mean, it was we had no money, no influence. We knew no one in power. We had no structured Democratic Party. So he said, you know, come with me. And I figured if he could do it, I could do it. But look, I had it a lot easier than a lot of women breaking in because my brother sat at the head of the table and my mm -hmm. brother was the boss. So when my brother pulled up a chair for me, he said, OK, guys, and they're mostly guys. He said, she's my sister. Whatever she says, consider that I'm saying it. She's the boss. Follow her lead. She's the one that is representing me. So in that sense, the path was open for me. But yeah. once my brother left the room, you know, I had to prove on my own that I wasn't a token, a token yeah. woman or the token sister. Let's take it back super early to the very first campaign you ran for Joe, 1970 Newcastle County Council race. Yeah. Did you know anything about running a no. race at that point? You just, you just kind of. He, uh, he said he was going and I said, okay, I'll go with you. And to much to my chagrin, I didn't, I not only didn't know anything about running a race. I just didn't know anything about Newcastle County either. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, there's a Newcastle County council. Oh, so uh, I learned, I had a lot to learn on the spot, but he was in and I was in with him. I love it. So, so far now, seven Senate campaigns, three presidential campaigns, and you write that the 1972 campaign was the one you savor the most. Why is that? We had no money, no influence. We knew no one in power. We had no structured party. So we had to create our own campaign. And we won by an astounding 3,163 votes. And it was the press dubbed us a children's crusade. And I was a teacher and Joe's late wife, Amelia, was a teacher. And it was those kids who, uh, high, I was a high school teacher. There was more skin in the game in high school in 1972 because there was a strong relationship between the issues in youth and 18-year-olds mm -hmm. vote for the first time. And we were running for civil rights against the war in Vietnam and for the environment. So when these kids came all in, the parents who said, my God, I can't get my kid out of bed before 12 o'clock you know, in the afternoon on a Sunday or a Monday, I mean, a Saturday or Sunday. When they got up at six o'clock, 
a.m. to hand deliver 150,000 leaflets throughout the state. These parents said, you know, I better take a second look at this guy. And I think it was the kids. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but not really. In my heart, I think it was the, the kids who, who uh, taught their parents. And that's how come yeah. we won. You are the campaign manager, but also sister. So how do you craft boundaries to keep both relationships? Or does that actually help the relationship? Oh, it helps the relationship mm. because he can leave the headquarters and go do what he does best, which is go out and meet, meeting the voters, listening to them, telling him what his vision is, what he thinks we should be doing and seeing how it meshes with theirs. And he doesn't have to worry about what's happened back at the ranch, you know, in the headquarters, like what ads going out, what, you know, what brochures are being written because we speak the same language. Not, yeah. Look, I don't have a PhD in uh, political science or campaign management, but I have a PhD in Joe Biden. So he didn't have to worry about any of that because of trust. Where the boundary is, the line is drawn, is once he's mm -hmm. elected, I don't do any governance. They didn't elect Joe and his sister to you know, be senator or be president. They elected Joe Biden. And Valerie will be doing a virtual book event with Elliott Bay Books tomorrow, April 19th at 7 p.m. We're going to have details for ticket and information on our website, so go check it out.